Hi everyone. Today, February 21st, we explore anger and resentment in politics. Our speaker Teresa Capellus from the University of Birmingham in the UK offers us an examination of the psychology of what is often called the angry citizen. Teresa and her colleagues conducted research on 164 excerpts from interviews with US angry citizens and found markers matching the psychological footprint of resentment, which you will share with us today. I'm Rodrigo Silva. Let's talk about politics and governance. Teresa, welcome to our episode. Thank you for having me. I would start to ask you, why is this topic important? It is really important for political psychologists because what we do, what we care about is really mapping the psychological content or underpinnings of political behavior. So as political psychologists, we are particularly keen to understand what it is, what is the psychology behind the phenomena that we see expressed in contemporary politics. So for us, labeling emotions uh, with the appropriate terminology in terms of content, um, but also what we, when we label something, we understand it as something as well, right? So appropriating, uh, uh, allocating the right label allows us to understand better the psychological experience of the people that we study. So why does this have implications for electoral politics? It does because emotions matter for the way we make sense uh, of the political world. When we think of somebody as angry, or when we think of ourselves as angry, we're likely to engage in particular actions and behaviors when we um, feel or think that somebody else is resentful or resentimental, as in this case, um, or anxious, we orient our political action and preferences accordingly. So this matters. Of course, and going straight to your uh, article, uh, when you started it, when you started the research with your colleagues, what were you hoping to find? So what was the research gap there? We were not trying to find something. We just wanted to be very careful in the way we map the emotional content of grievance politics that we study. There has been uh, a lot of debate, both in academic circles, but also in um, in policy, public opinion, political actor cycles, um, about what it what is this dominant emotional um, environment that we are ex experiencing in this context of grievance politics. So a lot of it has been attributed to anger. The angry citizen does this, the angry citizen does that. And by naming it as anger, then we make particular assumptions um, as scientists about what that means for the psychological state of these individuals, but also where they can go with that emotion, what happens as a consequence. So it affects the way we predict behavior. If we mislabel anger, if we misunderstand it, then our predictions are wrong. And the problem of that inspired this article is that a lot of our models that were trying to predict political behavior in the last five, 10 years have not been doing very well. We have not been predicting electoral outcomes. We have not been predicting the way citizens decide on issues. We have been off. We have had instruments that were not properly calibrated. So for us in political psychology, the first thing to do is look at the, emo the sentiment, the public sentiment. So we were asking ourselves, are the instruments we're using right? And are we studying the phenomenon we think we're studying? The answer was no when we collected the data. So we started from, um, let's say, a desire to confirm the status quo, to just verify that what we had in front of us was indeed anger, um, with a hunch that perhaps it wasn't because of the studies in political psychology suggesting that resentment or resentment, as you called it, is a, is a separate um, emotional experience. And then we wanted to contrast these two and see which one holds water. Of course, so after this intention to mapping and finding out that uh, the expect some ex expectations were not met, can you let us know about the findings? Yeah, so what we did in the study is we actually went in and we used um, interviews, excerpts from interviews that other colleagues have collected because we wanted to be as far away from the investigation as 
observance as possible. Sometimes if you're conducting interviews and you have in mind that you're going to find something, you know, you kind of lead the respondent. So we wanted to be very objective, in a way, external to the process. So we used data that is readily, readily available, interviews of other colleagues, and we coded them for expressions of anger uh, versus the more complex emotional mechanism of resentima that has resentment, resentima for your audience that has in it um, victimhood, um, envy, feelings of humiliation, shame, frustration. It's more complex and more passive than anger. So we were coding these excerpts of citizens that the actual interviewers had labeled or identified or wrote about as if they were angry. We were coding them for traces of anger as we studied them in the literature. And we were also systematically coding them for traces of resentment. And what we found is that the profile of those statements did not match anger. Instead, it had elements that you would not expect to see if these individuals were just experiencing anger. So we were looking at the experience of it, not how individuals self-identify, because it is very possible in the context of what we call emotionology, how we talk about emotions in the current political climate, these people see themselves as angry, but the deep bottom level of this affective experience did not match anger. It matched the deeper, more victimhood-centered, more passive um, flavor of resentment. Wow. And how can uh, these findings impact, I would probably say, uh, individual choice politically or in terms of public policy? So how do the findings translate into real-life situations? Yeah, that's a really, really important question, because for scientists, for us, we want to be able to map, but then also we want to be able to contribute to knowledge. So when there's a couple of ways it matters a lot for political outcomes. First of all, political leaders, political actors, public policy officials that engage with citizens in this for some of them, frustrating environment of grievance politics, where they see the grievance, but they cannot meet the grievance. They don't know how to address the grievance in policies. If we can inform political actors and policymakers about the content of these frustrations, and we separate them from anger, we give them better tools to address them in the policy design and policymaking practices they employ. Because anger doesn't give us a lot of clues about what it is that that makes the individual behave it, it, the way they do. It, it usually links to um, a sense of injustice, but beyond that, it doesn't give you the complex emotional experience. But the resentment sits on more painful, more bitter, more antisocial expressions of what you would typically label anger. So you can have pro-social anger when you're angry about injustices done to you, but you go out and you want to demonstrate and you want to correct it. Or you can feel resentimentful, and in that context, you would not go out and seek what we call pro-social political action. Now, if as a political actor or a policy official, you want to... Um, engage citizens more constructively in pro-democratic politics, addressing the, the deep felt emotions of resentment can help you then alleviate the frustration, um, put them in a more constructive frame of mind, and hopefully then more receptive towards the policies, but also establishing trust, engaging with other citizens, not, um, not being part of this anti-social mechanism of grievance politics. We want to be able to free people from the grip of resentment. So labeling it, understanding it, um, making sense of it is the first step towards that. Absolutely. And uh, having these findings and recommendations that you just give uh, in mind, let's look at the now what. Can you indicate to our uh, listeners now what comes next in this topic? So was something left to find? There's so much more to find. So the data that we used were 
already uh, secondary data, data that somebody, other colleagues have collected. So we are in the process of collecting more data now with interviews of focus groups to, to see, to, to, to over broader range of countries, um, broader range of individuals, um, women as well, because the sample that we had was primarily men, because they are the suspect of, you know, the, the angry citizen. So we want to see how this plays out in women. But also we want to look at it examining uh, particular policies. Uh, we also want to be able to engage with um, experimental methods, because what's really interesting in this process of resentment is when can it be flipped? Can it be reserved, uh, reversed? How do you unscrew what we, we use in the article, a metaphor, almost like a corkscrew that digs deeper in the psyche of the individuals that are involved? So can you reverse that mechanism and engage them pro-socially in democratic politics? And how do we do that? So um, stimulating positive emotional responses, gratitude, joy, enthusiasm, hope, um, are some suggested theoretical, I guess, antidotes, but um, we don't know yet. So there is a lot that we need to find out. Of course, so in the future, we are still looking at another uh, form of collecting data, looking at gender uh, differences, other policies. So we're uh, still at the tip of the iceberg. What, uh, yes, it is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, if there is a tip of the iceberg, we actually have a, an iceberg metaphor. We call it anger. Anger is at the tip. But when you dig deeper and deeper, you see the psychological profile. And we just now want this iceberg to sail a little further so we can explore how it plays out in different contexts. Of course. I think it's very useful for this tip of the iceberg for uh, researchers who want to conduct uh, their work on this topic. So now, can you provide uh, some additional resources about the topic that we have been discussing today? Resources, you mean references and... Some articles, or webinars, and books, so anything that would help our listeners to explore this topic as well. Anyone who is interested in uh, hearing more about the emotionality of grievance politics is best that they engage also with the broader discussion of, of, of emotions, not just resentment and anger. So the um, Oxford Handbook of Political Psychology has sections and discussions on emotions, identity, values, and how they come together. The Palgrave Handbook of Political Psychology also gives us some really interesting insights about the emotional dynamics of contemporary politics. Um, with a few colleagues, we have been publishing on um, resentment, but also the way it links with political reactionism, that uh, backward-looking orientation that wants to restore the past. So um, that's another publication group that uh, people can be looking at. And another angle that some uh, fantastic colleagues at the University of Kent have been engaging with is collective narcissism. And we have a link where we are looking at um, how reactionism Resentima and collective narcissism constitute what we label the antisocial triad of grievance politics that allows us to understand from um, many angles how collective experiences come together with values that individuals adopt, the, the backward looking um, values that don't just want to preserve the present as conservative values would, but want to turn backwards. Uh, sometimes violently, sometimes urgently. So that's the second component. And the emotional flavor of that, which is bitter and resentmentful, and it has vi victimhood as its core. So this is a really interesting tripartite relationship that can explain, I think, a lot of the experiences and the phenomena that we see in contemporary politics these days. Of course, Teresa, uh, I always like to finish our episodes by asking you if any speaker would start listening to only now. So what's the punchline of this conversation? So what do you want uh, our audience to remember from this talk? We have to be very alert when we identify anger in contemporary politics and we it would be good for us all to reflect on the psychological essence of this experience and perhaps consider that it might be more complex more deep more painful for the individual that experiences it rather than just reactive anger to frustration um resentment opens up conversations that are difficult about shame um, humiliation, about repeated feelings of rejection 
that put people in a position of feeling marginalized and excluded and they respond so if we want to address the contemporary emotionality of the politics that we consider founded on grievance i think it is good for us to look at its emotional content a good wrap up this episode is available on the let's talk about politics and governance website on Koji.tu's YouTube channel, as well as in podcast directories. Teresa, thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you very much, Rodrigo.